Hey guys, Edbud here. Today I'm going to try and answer the question as to whether this retro Air Pegasus 83 is still a running shoe. Hey cats, got the original Nike Air Pegasus 83 here. If I say original, it's a retro version of that original shoe, the very first in the Pegasus line. The blueprint to the other Pegasus iterations that came after it. This retro was just too awesome and too intriguing to pass up. So I actually took it out for a run to see what it was like and it was okay. I'm certainly running worse. This one weighs in at 346 grams or 12.2 ounces in my UK size 11, which is exactly to the gram what the Nike Air Pegasus 38 weighs in at in that size. So there we go, not a lot has changed. Took these out for a five mile run today, which is about eight kilometers. Average pace of seven minutes 52 per mile, which is four minutes 54 per kilometer. Just taking things nice and easy today. I had two days of post COVID shot recovery. I know the original version of the shoe had a four inch air unit just under the heel. I take it there's something similar. I don't know exactly what's in there. I'm not gonna cut it open with a saw or anything. They used to say it was a half air section in the heel Perhaps a nod to the sort of half horse, half winged beast kind of vibe. Yeah, perhaps that's where the whole fly thing comes from. We wouldn't have the vapor fly or the alpha fly, perhaps without the Pegasus. Imagine if they hadn't chosen Pegasus and they'd chosen ferret or squirrel. Yeah, perhaps that COVID shot's affecting me a little bit. Obviously over time they've experimented, moving the air around from the heel to the forefoot and back again and so on so on. Obviously moving to zoom air at some point because it's just a whole lot thinner. You can kind of see where the wedge is here. It's just a lot more midsole foam. I'm not gonna do a typical review score on this one because it's not a typical shoe. I mean, upper wise, you can see it's a real departure from a standard modern day running shoe. I mean, less sort of plush materials, but oddly on foot, it actually feels a lot more plush than most shoes do these days. I mean, we've got leather bits here, we've got suede. You see here that the upper actually doesn't reach around anywhere near as far as quite a lot of shoes do these days. Really like minimize the upper. I really like that. There's just more reliance on the tongue there to actually protect the top of the foot. The lace loop here is just two pieces cut out of the tongue and the laces just slide straight through. Tongue size is very appropriate though. There's quite a lot of it there and a lot of stitching underneath. That's something that they seem to have tried to remove a lot of in modern day running shoes. I don't know whether people think it like rubs on their foot or something like that, but didn't feel any of that today. Felt really nice actually. So we've got suede eyelets and toe guard. Give it quite a retro feel here, I think you'll agree. And the heel is fully suede with the large Nike swoosh acting almost like an overlay, providing a little bit of structure there. You'll see from a picture of the original shoe that the swoosh is slightly larger in this retro. Whether the runner's not, the lockdown on top of the foot was really good. Though I've got to be honest, the leather in the heel collar there is quite daunting. I did put it on and think, whoa, you know, is my heel up to this? Is my Achilles up to this? But it was okay. I wore some quite thin sort of standard Nike racing socks with these and yeah, it was fine. You'll see the upper itself is vastly lower in profile than a lot of modern day running shoes. It doesn't come up anywhere near as close to the ankle as the Pegasus 38, for example. So inherently, some people might find this shoe a little bit less stable than some modern offerings. Could do with a little bit of extra lace length. I couldn't quite get a double knot there, but this isn't a shoe that I'm gonna be, you know, pulling out for loads and loads of miles. It was kind of a bit of a fun experiment. It turned out to be a lot more fun, in fact, than I thought it was gonna be. I did find that over the five miles, the upper did give a little bit towards the end, and I relaced and tightened the shoe up a little bit, and it was fine. Upper feel is really nice internally, and I see no reason you couldn't really use it as a daily running shoe. So it's certainly a firmer ride than some recent foams, gotta be honest. Midsole wise, that air unit's really prevalent actually in the heel. Foam's quite compressive, no idea what it is, maybe it's just standard EVA stuff they use on casual shoes nowadays, but it was compressive enough, quite responsive. Certainly those EVA foams of the past stuck around for many, many years. And you wonder if React is pretty much the same weight, but perhaps just a lot more durable. Perhaps over time, it'll just hold up a lot better. It won't compress so much over lots and lots of miles. I did throw in a couple of faster miles today, one at around about seven minutes 14 per mile, 
so that works out about four minutes 30 per kilometer so you know keeping it relatively easy today but yeah it was all right on the faster mile quite enjoyed myself a couple of people gave me some quite strange looks as i went by i'm not sure it's the sort of running shoe that you would typically see people using i'm really quite surprised after my reconnaissance run in the pegasus 83 it's certainly a well-built model i wouldn't say it's as narrow perhaps as some of the other nike shoes you can buy these days it looks quite narrow when you remove the insole and look inside but actually in the toe box quite a bit of room certainly one of the most stable retro runners that i've picked up over the last couple of years i can't help but imagine how this upper would be on top of a zoom x midsole i don't want loads of zoom x just a similar amount that's here leaving the air wedge in the heel as well it could make for a tasty concoction I don't know if it's the same unit that they used to use. I know they still manufacture the ones that they utilized in the Jordan 3, 4, 5 and 6, I guess. I think that's the same units that they used in the Nike Air Max pre-day that they released quite recently. I can't imagine that all of the stuff in this retro is the same. It's probably slightly different materials. Although that said, the Jordan 4 and Jordan 5 I picked up recently are really close, I think. They've just improved the materials slightly, so you know, this could be a slightly better version of what you had back in 83. I'm not sure about those materials, but it's a perfectly serviceable running shoe. I ran five miles today and I feel fantastic afterwards. I have to say, I didn't feel fantastic yesterday. I felt rather tired. Outsole wise, there's some serious lugs going on here. The classic dots on each one, AKA the waffle outsole featured on many retros. It felt good on roads, but when I hit some dirt areas, it felt even better. That's what I find with these waffle outsole shoes. They seem to work better as sort of half and half road and trail shoes. You got the classic cutaway section here in that sort of rear heel area that leads up to the midfoot. And then of course you've got those flex areas and you actually see the same thing still in the Pegasus 38 that was released this year. I mean, there's a great many similarities between this shoe and the Pegasus 38. I mean, the next percent looks pretty space age compared to this one, doesn't it? But very different use cases. Overall, I picked these up for around about 89 Earth credits and actually, I think I'll probably carry on using them as a running shoe. I've really got them as a casual shoe, but yeah, I'm gonna carry on using them. Why not, eh? I mean, I can't use weight as a reason for not using them. They weigh the same amount as the Pegasus 38. And just look at that awesome tongue with the Nike Air logo beautiful so does the react foam the gusseted tongue the lace loops and those super soft upper materials make a difference does it really make all that much difference it does beg the question though where is all the weight in the pegasus 38 you've got a potentially much lighter midsole material so why are they the same weight i just don't get it this shoe certainly is bare bones which today most running shoes are not it's just the key component pieces what do you make of this air pegasus 83 guys i mean aesthetically i think it's a, a beautiful classic and it actually performed really nicely today let me know in the comments below a quick musical interlude for you i know there's a few viewers of the channel that really love teenage fan club and they have a new album out how did I not realise this? How did I not know about it? It's called Endless Arcade. I've only managed to check out a few tracks as of today when I found out about it. The tracks Home and The Sun Won't Shine On Me are particularly good. You've got those classic teenage fan club guitar melodies, those appreciated sort of picked guitar parts. And of course, with Teenage Fan Club, you always expect some strong harmonies. Certainly need to give this one a slightly longer listen, but it's good to hear the band back again with that classic sound. I think pretty much any Teenage Fan Club stuff's worth checking out. If you've never heard them before, do go and do yourself a favor. Certainly feeling fully recovered now after that COVID jab, certainly knocked me out. I think a couple of days rest have actually done the legs a bit of good, in fact. Now the energy levels are back up. We've had some pizza, we've had some cookies, and drunk quite a lot of cherry Coke as well. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Thanks for sticking with me to the very end of the video today. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos. And it really helps the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.